Good morning. Ah, oh, been awake for about 10 minutes. Well, we had a really nice sleep. There is some swell coming into this bay, but luckily we're on a catamaran, so it barely bothered us. And uh, Nick's just raising anchor now, or weighing anchor. And we've just uh, come upstairs to find ourselves in this beautiful bay. It's funny when you arrive somewhere at night, you're like, you only have the vaguest sense of what it looks like. And then in the morning, you're like, oh, that's where we are. That's nice. So we are just going to get on our way now and head off to a place called Terengganu. And that is where we are going to check in to Malaysia. Oh, okay, we're up. Good morning. It's bright and early. So yeah, uh, cleared the prop, we got some fitful sleep. My body still thought it was on a three hour on, three hour off. Can you show your underpants? Your underpants collection. The filter for the washing machine has re-blocked itself, so we have dripping wet underpants. It means it's got some Morse flags up there with it. So it says help, help in underpants. Anyway, we are off to Terendano. Beautiful little emergency stop last night. A couple of points we have stuffed up on. We thought we had a Malaysian courtesy flag. We clearly do not, we need to get one of those today. We need to get 300 litres of fuel, which is about what we bought. We need to check in and to get uh, some ringgits, some Malaysian cash pay for our time here. We do not need to provision. We, we don't need to provision. We have to do some no. fixes to the boat. Uh, we've got to tidy the boat up. Yeah, SIM cards. SIM cards, yes, we need to communicate. We don't have anything. And it is fancy Starlink. We still got a couple of yogurt pots and some string. Um, and actually, you know what? There's a strange joy to not having contact for three days. There's also a strange anxiety, it's just being out of contact. Uh, I don't know, love, I kind of like, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, just say hello to people and like we're safe, which we do, we have an EPA and we have a track. And, and the we, check weather. And the check weather, yeah. Anything you want to add? No, I've already said my piece this morning. You said your piece? Yeah. My underpants are this way. I think those ones need to go in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you. All right, onward to Terengganu. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Just sat on the bow, one of my favorite spots on this boat. And as you can see by I think the background, there's a few little uh, rollers coming in. We are just motor sailing into like five knots of wind. There is no wind at all, really. But that said, it is a really beautiful day to be out in the water. I just feel a bit of breeze picking up now. So yeah, with any luck, we might get a little bit of a sailing breeze happening, but uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath. Anyway, we're about, I think 12 miles or so from Terengganu. So we're going to get in early afternoon and then crack on with checking in and getting our tanks filled up because we're only on about 30% um, capacity or 30% of our fuel tank. We've used about 70% uh, of them in the last five days because we've done so much bloody motoring into headwind, which was painful. But I think that we actually got out of it pretty easily because I've been having a chat to some of the other 1370 owners, Phil and Ollie and Dave, um, who are just ahead of us. And they've made the trip recently across the Gulf of Thailand. And uh, yeah, they were saying that their first 24, 36 hours out of Thailand were um, horrendous, like really bashing into swell and strong winds. So. Yeah, I think that those headwinds are unfortunately just a feature of the way that the wind bends around into the Gulf. Um, there was no real avoiding them, which is why we left when we did, because I was like, well, we're going to probably catch them at some point. We have to just crack on. Anyway, enough reminiscing. We are going to get there in a couple of hours and I'm very pleased to be checking into Malaysia. We're going to be here for a little while. Um, I wish that we had time to explore and cruise Malaysia more fully, although hopefully we'll get a little bit of time to do that, um, maybe like in the Langkawi area. We, as I've said a few times over the last few episodes, we're on a mission to get to Phuket. So we can't dilly-dally, which I'm 
disappointed about because you know there's some beautiful islands um, just south of us in, in the the Tim and group and they just look absolutely spectacular and I would love nothing more than just to spend a couple of weeks cruising around them. That being said, the bureaucracy in Malaysia is a little opaque and there's been some um, incidents of boats anchoring off these gorgeous islands and then being fined a huge, huge amount of money because they're part of a marine park and they don't have a permit or they can't anchor and some officials say yes you can anchor and others say oh no you can't and there's no clarity. Cruisers are a bit jumpy about anchoring um, in the TMN group uh, at the moment and so are we. Um, so we don't want to be, you know, falling foul of some obscure rule that has been written down for a long time but has been kind of happily ignored for like years and years and then suddenly they're like, oh no, we're enforcing this now. One thing we feel really awkward about and it's very naughty of us is we thought we had a Malaysian courtesy flag and it turns out we don't. What we thought was a Malaysian courtesy flag is, belongs to some other country that we can't work out. So, <laughs> I mean, very basic. I can't believe we overlooked that and I feel terrible that we're in Malaysian waters and we don't have a courtesy flag. So we need to get one today, um, hopefully. And yeah, because that's obviously very important. Good afternoon. Uh, it is, we are woo, two miles from Terengganu. But it is where it's the first official point of check-in and we need to go and check in. We have a visa agent to um, get that all smoothly addressed. We need to pick up those 300 litres of fuel, fix the washing machine because the fuel filters are blocked and we have run out of fresh underpants. So we're here, we have to get to drop the sails, get into this port anchor here call the visa agent, get the dinghy in, and all these other good things. We'll be back soon. So we're meant to be in like two meters of water, but we seem to be in seven meters of water, but this is a dredge channel. Okay. And then we just go in a bit and then we turn around, like, you know, we just keep going straight. And then once we're out of this swell a little bit, we can turn in. Yeah, 30 meters, this shoals massively. Okay. You can see it's shoaling. Oh, okay. Although that may actually be the breakwater. Yeah, there's definitely swell still can, coming into this side of the I can't go too harbor. far though, I'm at high water look. I've got 1.7 over. What's the tidal range? 1.1 to 1.7. Okay, well. I'm on 6.9. Honestly, this forward facing so nice, the bollocks. <laughs> I think we've got swell coming in even over there, love. I don't I know. think we can get rid of the swell. No, I know. But tucking ourselves in is a good idea. Yeah, we'll tuck in as much as we can. Yeah, this is fine. I think we're going to have the swell on the beam, but I think we can do about it. I right, try dropping from there, love. Just wait for the boat to stop moving. You tell me when. You can drop now. Twelve meters out. I'm just going to reverse very gently. Okay, we're heading back. Let's start paying it out, please. Bye. Okay. The boat is definitely over. Yep, the chain's going out towards starboard at the moment. Okay, the chain is pretty much straight out in front, over. I'm pretty confident that we're holding. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, right hook's out the water. Okay, my transit shows that we're not moving. Over. Okay. <laughs> How dorky do I look? 
I've got my bike from Bunnings out, I've got my radio. Alright. My first thought of the day, I want to get that shackle sorted out, right? Yeah. And for that you've got to let the main sheet off. Can you explain to people what happened? Yeah, the seizing wire, the shackle pin just woke the bullet this way, days. We've just gotten back from clearing into Malaysia. We lost the shackle pin. So Nick was uh, in the middle of fixing it and I checked my WhatsApp and our agent was like, when are you coming? Immigration closes in 45 minutes. And we're like, oh shit. Literally dropped what we were doing, launched the dinghy, sped on over to the marina. Met with some guy, a taxi driver, I think, and he drove us to the airport and we were sent upstairs to immigration and our agent met us there and <laughs> we had to sit in this office for like 15 minutes waiting to clear in. And he sat there, the agent, watching our YouTube videos, <laughs> which was a little odd. He was like, literally just had the sound on and all I could hear was like Nick's lovely voice uh, going on about, I don't know, I think he was watching like our tour episode. Anyway, so that was kind of amusing. So we got all cleared in and we come back um, to the boat and now we need to get our fuel tanks filled up. These are the spare jerry cans that we uh, filled in Pattaya and we're going to use them to top up our tanks. So we're going to try and fill up the jerry cans again probably a few times while we're here in Terengganu because we really need to fill these tanks up. It's been a bugger of a day and it's not done yet. We have uh, We've got to refuel at between 9.30 and I kind of hope that we've got to do three runs to the gas station. So we've got to take the dinghy to the dock, the dock to in a car to the gas station. And we've told the visa agent we need to do this three times. Fix the washing machine, fix the broken uh, or the, the lost shackle pin, fix the Spectra netting on the sail bag. Yeah, we didn't film that bit. 80 litres of jet water, uh, uh, diesel in the tanks. Now time for, what is it? Beer o'clock. It is definitely beer o'clock. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, we've got a little sunset cruise going on so next door. I've had a shower, I'm going to be tackle out. Get my legs akimbo, Lucky drinking me. my beer. No, I'm going to do this lot. <laughs> Lucky them. Welcome to Terengamu. <laughs> Well, it is 9.30 and Nick has just gone off on the dinghy by himself to meet our agent and I think his driver person. Made a very last minute decision for me to stay on the boat because we just started swinging in a weird way, uh, literally as we were getting ready to jump in the dinghy, um, just started doing 180s. We're kind of perpendicular to the wind right now, which uh, probably can be explained by the tides. I'm sure that that's what the issue is, but it, we've, we're just a bit jumpy. We're scarred, people, we're scarred, because once upon a time, not that long ago, we went ashore at night and we came back and our boat was a mile out to sea. And yeah, we're very, very paranoid about dragging. So we decided that I'd stay on the boat. So we were here for ages and then we've just done like a big 180 and we've ended up here. So we are traveling upwind, which is something. But it's still a bit disconcerting. I'm sure it's just the tides. This is uh, tidal around here, so yeah. All right, I know the uh, this camera is not the best for filming at night, but uh, if you can see in the very distance a little red and green light, then that is Nick. He's been gone for about two hours. Are you okay? That's one of the sketchiest things I've ever done on a boat. Well, basically, I left him in pitch black, right? Yeah. What I don't, what we didn't know about this place, there's a tidal bore. A tidal what? A tidal bore. Basically, the fing swell comes in and creates surf. Oh. So I came out of here and I'm like going under that bridge, like literally surfing. And I'm like. Where we went today? Yes. Oh. At a certain state of tide, there's a tidal, there's a wave. Okay. It just comes fucking rolling in. So I'm going through this and I'm like, if this boat turns sideways, I'm fucked, I'm out. Like that's it, I won't be able to get to shore. 
So basically, I, I was like super slow, just trying to get through these fucking continual fucking sets coming through. So under the bridge? Yes. Jesus Christ. So I get under the fucking bridge, right? Yeah. I, I find the jetty. Yeah. And I'm like, and the swell is just coming through and the dinghy is just doing this against this metal jetty. And I'm like, well, I'm this is it. I'm going to lose the fucking dinghy. So anyway, I managed to tie the dinghy up and thankfully I thought, what have I got? I've got a dry bag. So I inflated the dry bag and made a makeshift fender out of it and just made put the fender that put that down and actually it held. It deflated, but it didn't puncture the, because there's literally, I'm, I've got the torch and I'm looking at all the worlds in the girders and there's all these sharp edges. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking lose the dinghy, right? So I'm like, okay, there's nothing else I can do about it. I've got, and basically when I got out, I just took the painter yeah. and the fucking swell is so strong. It's like taking the fucking dinghy from me. Jesus so I'm like, Christ. shit. So I fucking tied a bowl in on one end, got the stern lines, put another one, put a fender down there. The guy turns up with four jerry cans, right? Wow. So it's like, off we go. He turned up with four jerry cans. No, I turned up with four jerry, the four jerry cans. Get in the car, blah, blah, blah. Turn up at petrol station. They're like, no, no, we can't serve you. You've got 20 litre cans, we only fill five litres. So I'm like, okay, well, I've got to do this three times tonight. Yeah. Anyway, went to the second petrol station big, and they're like, no, we don't have diesel. Third petrol station, we don't have diesel. Caltex don't have diesel. Fourth petrol station, you found a shell. We're now like 10 miles out of town, right? Go to this counter and the girl's like, uh, you're only allowed to get, it's like, she's like, how many jerry cans do you have? And he's like four. And she's like, in that case, you can have 20 liters. You can only have 20 liters. The new government orders come through. And I'm like, how like I need like 500 liters so yeah. like that's not gonna work anyway eventually like he said uh look well there's two of us we have 20 liters come have 20 liters each so he's like she's like yes you can have 20 liters each so he's like quick 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 get in the get this before she changes her mind yeah. so we've got 20 liters each and then we're off again yeah then turn up bezing out in the middle of and whoop whoop down some highway right as we're going down this way there's a police roadblock the other side and the police are like I'm like what's going on he's like police police don't worry just keep going then we ended up like fucking god knows where out of town came back got into another petrol station same stunt two of us 20 liters each he's like yeah 20 liters each and then like whatever oh give me 50 here's 50 hold 150 in your hand yes 50 for one and then I had to give 50 because we had to pay two separate prices we couldn't do it together get in the car and then he's like because there's a police roadblock he's like that we're going back roading it so he took me around all these i mean i remember just going past these fucking little paddy fields and there's all these like little streams with lilies in i'm thinking that's nice fucking, no, no, no. In fact, it... so i'm sitting there thinking what do i do if i get back and the dinghy's punctured and the fucking port side fucking sponson's gone or the fucking port side tube's gone yeah i'm like well, i'll have to just message you and try and haul the engine off and just fucking come back tomorrow Right. Anyway, I got back to the dip. We got back. It took like fucking half an hour to go. What time is it? It's like fucking half past 11. I left at 9.20, right? Yeah. It's been two and a half hours to so get 80 litres of diesel. Yeah. Get back. The dinghy's okay. The fucking dry bag took the brunt of it. Thank you, Doyle. Your dry bag fucking, can work as fucking occasional like fenders. <sighs> get back in. And in all fairness, came back out here. The tidal state had changed a lot. So it wasn't so fucking crazy, but going under the bridge, there is still crazy shit going on. So I literally crawled through the under the bridge bit, just doing this and then came back to you. Oh my God. F me ragged. Anyway, I got, so anyway, I, he's also given us the outbound clearance and everything else. So we've got our clearance documents. We've got everything we need to leave. All right, well, lesson learned. Anyone coming here to refuel, it's uh, more than than it's worth. Mm. You're going to edit that out. That out Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. Well, listen, well done. You really took one for the team there. All right, well, on that note, do you want to say farewell to our lovely viewers who just had to endure like five minutes of you ranting, although with good reason, I might say. All right. Listen, it's all going to be okay. You finish your drink. And we're going to finish this episode. All right, listen, I hope you loved this one because I f***ing didn't. And Teresa's going to be like, I've got to edit all your swearing out. Uh, I hope you watched it. I hope you liked it. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a comment. Sailing is great. It is. You really should all try this because it's nothing but fun. And honestly, I'd rather be doing this than be in an office. High highs, low lows. We're settling down for night watch. We The boat is seems very settled. We've got about uh, anything between eight and a half and ten knots. You decent. That's wrong, it's very...
There's a, there's a length discrepancy between the length of my sarong and the length of my schlong. I'm going to polish this entire water system when we get into uh, TM. We are doing something very exciting today and possibly quite stressful. So we're just entering the Singapore Strait now. Singapore Police, Singapore Police, this is yacht Ruby Rose 2, over. Eased off the main halyard and the main dropped about a foot and it's just jammed. It has been quite the journey. Oh, 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 oh,